CataractCoach.com, the toughest case of my life. Now, when an expert surgeon tells you this is the toughest case of the past 20 years, you better listen carefully. Now, our guest surgeon here is Dr. Pradeep Mohanta from India, who is a fantastic surgeon. And you can see, look at this eye, very small eye. Patient has microcornea, coloboma, a dense cataract, loose zonules. This is not going to be an easy case. So starting off, make an incision here, like a scleral tunnel. Why? Why not do a corneal incision? Well, think about it. This is a tiny little cornea. You, can, you want to avoid making these incisions because that same 2.5 millimeter incision in this tiny eye is going to be huge. So you can see putting an air bubble inside the eye and nice, good, solid fill of that air bubble. And you're going to want to also put some tripan blue dye in. But make sure the dye is just a bare amount. Why don't you fill the whole eye with the dye here? Well, because remember, with the coloboma and the absence of zonal support in that inferior quadrant, if you put too much blue dye in, it's all going to go back into the vitreous cavity, and you're going to have a big problem there. Now, iris hooks are going in, and the iris hooks now are going in to help expand that pupil. In a case like this, oh, I forgot to even tell you, this patient's monocular. We'll show you that at the end. Truly monocular patient. So what are you going to do here? So starting off through the side port, getting a cystotome and getting a rex is done. Now you're going to want to have a good eye for what the correct size rex is. Remember, small eye, white to white small here, maybe even sub 10 millimeters. And the dilation is pretty poor too, so don't make a baby rexes. You're going to want to make a rex that's sufficiently large, still make a 5 millimeter, 5.5 millimeter rexes. So gentle, gentle hydrodissection to help free up that nucleus. And again, this is a big, big nucleus, especially considering the size of the eye. Relative to the tiny eye, the nucleus is huge. And so taking his time, do a lot of hydrodissection, extra viscoelastic to protect the central corneal endothelium. And now, let's see what's going to happen next. And looks like a Sinsky hook in each hand just to help rotate that nucleus. Make sure the eye pressure is normal. It keeps checking that. And... Could you do MSICX? You could, I suppose, but it's a huge incision for a tiny little eye. I like this technique here, using a Simcoe cannula to help decompress, get out any liquefied lens cortex that may be there. And now it looks like a capsular tension ring, so CTR is going inside the eye. So putting the CTR at the beginning of the case is going to help to give you some support of that capsule for a full 360. The challenge is, of course, cortex removal may be a little bit more difficult. And now here at the end, getting that last eyelet and using a Sinsky to help you put it inside the capsule bag. So now you have a CTR in, got a little bit more support here. Again, rotating that nucleus around. You can even use these two Sinskys or two choppers to even split the nucleus at this point. But now coming with the FACO probe. Keep in mind, too, you may have to have a special order IOL because the IOL power on this eye is likely to be at least 40 diopters, if not higher. So you're going to buzz in the FACO probe and doing a vertical type of quick chop and nice and gentle. You notice how he's being very gentle in the capsule bag, breaking off a little piece at a time and rotating and not worrying about taking out the quadrant just yet. He's more uh, focused on taking the nucleus and splitting it up into small fragments. Now, once he has many small chops done, now the pieces of the nucleus can be aspirated. Obviously, we've sped up the video. It's four times normal speed. And just think about that. If you have an absolute expert surgeon who's done tens of thousands of surgeries and it takes that surgeon more than 20 minutes for the case, that's a really tough case. And so you can see at the end here, very careful as the nucleus comes up to make sure that you're not going to entrap or catch that um, capsule. Right? The CTR is there that's going to help you as well. But the last thing you want here is more capsule damage. So now look at that. Last piece of nucleus is still stuck there. So what are you going to do in the meantime? More viscoelastic, of course, expands the bag and protects the corneal endothelium more. But look at this technique here now. The IOL is going in the bag first. Why? IOL scaffold. Using it as a scaffold is helpful because now that IOL will protect the posterior capsule and it also keeps the bag inflated and kept away from you. By the way, look at that 6 millimeter optic, which looks absolutely huge in the size. So certainly this eye has a white to white of less than 10 millimeters, corneal diameter of less than 10. Now, Simcoe cannula to remove the cortex and look at the tangential manner in which it's done. The tangential manner is very helpful because the CTR may otherwise hold some of the lens cortex towards the um, periphery or lens equator. Now the hooks come out of the eye. And wow, what a nice looking result so far. Let's see how he finishes up the case here. We're positing some iris.
Now, would you go also and do anything with the coloboma? I think not. I think the patient's used to it. It's, you're not worried about a cosmetic issue. This patient may even have some underlying degree of amblyopia. And here at the end, washing out the viscoelastic and closing up the conjunctiva. That looks like a fantastic case. So, wow, that is a roller coaster of a case. Beautifully done, Dr. Mohanta. Thank you for sending the video in. Love to learn from you. Here's the post op pics. So, you saw that post op here, truly monocular, the new eye. Wow, what a great result. Patient's happy.